let's take a moment to thank this episode's sponsor, Podcorn. Now, as you all know, I am a huge advocate for pursuing your passions and creating multiple streams of income. Well, this podcast is my passion, and by generating income through the show, I'm able to continue to support the show and create more content to share with all of you. Now, Podcorn is a dedicated platform that connects podcasters to amazing podcast sponsorship opportunities like topical discussions, giveaways, interviews, or host read ads just like this one. Now, with Podcorn, there's no middleman, which means that you get to retain complete control of your show and the brands that you choose to collaborate with. Podcorn also makes sure that you're protected and compensated for the work that you do. I have personally had the opportunity to review brands that are looking to collaborate on podcasts and handpick what brands I wanted to feature on my show based off of what I thought all of you guys might enjoy hearing. Now, having transparency, full control, and creative freedom is a value that Podcorn and I have in common, which is why I love using their platform. Click the link in my show notes to sign up with Podcorn and start browsing sponsorship opportunities today. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Financially Free Journey podcast, and I'm your host, Courtney Dyer, and today I have an amazing guest with me, Sam. Sam Fairman, is, she's an entrepreneur, but she's also a social media guru, and this has been a highly requested topic for those of you trying to build personal brands and businesses, and Sam has been in the social media game since 2013. She started a blog. She's very successful, and she currently runs her own social media agency called the Sauce Boss Agency. And uh, the Sauce Creative Agency, it really helps people find their success with their social media and their brands and their businesses, but they add just a little bit of spice and flavor into the mix. And so Sam, welcome to the show today. How have you been doing? Great. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I am so excited. And guys, I think I had mentioned to you uh, a couple of weeks ago that I went on another podcast recently and we had so much fun and it was Sam's podcast. And so I'll make sure to link that episode down below too, because we had such a great time. We talked about money and building financial freedom and investing. And so I think you guys would like that as well on her show. So I'll make sure to link it. But today, what I really wanted to go over with Sam was really talking about how we can utilize social media to build a personal brand or a business. Because again, we see tons of people making serious cash when it comes to using social media. So Sam, first, can you just tell us a little bit about what inspired you to start your own social media agency and how did you go about doing that? Yeah. So I've actually been in the entrepreneurial space for a few years now, and I actually started an online boutique at first And I did that for about two years and I basically learned everything not to do (laughs) with the business. Yes. I, I probably made every possible mistake I could have. So it was a great way to learn, but the hard way. Um, and then from there, I actually started another shop. It was a vintage shop. And while I was doing that, that started, uh, the ball started to roll there. And in the mix of it, I was getting a lot of inquiries from, you know, previous employers or, you know, previous coworkers or just kind of like random people from my past. And they knew that I had a, a background in social media and I knew what I was doing with it. And they're like, Hey, we need help with our social. Like, can you help us? And at that point, like I hadn't thought about doing social media really. Like I was definitely in the fashion world. And as I kept getting asked these questions, it just kept, like it was like almost screaming at me. It was like, okay, this is, I think this is actually the way it's to your go. destiny. Yeah. Yes. And I think I was like, so like, I mean, I love fashion. It's always going to be a big part of my life. But um, what I learned was it wasn't supposed to be my career. And So when I started getting into the social media space, what I realized was it mixes the two things that I love the most, which is creativity, but also having the logic behind it because there's numbers, there's strategy, but then you also like, it's such a creative space. You've got to have kind of a marriage of both. And once I started picking up clients, I started getting the ball rolling. Like we didn't have a name for 
the agency for probably like four months. We were like, it was me and a friend that were like doing this, figuring this out. And then here we are. So well, how, okay. So what sparked the name? I have to add, because I, I yes. love the name and it is so unique. What, so how did you guys come up with it? Yes. So, um, I wish I had like some cool story, but I don't, I literally just, was, just make one up. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I really should just make one up, but, um, I was, I was struggling with the name for so long. And like with my other businesses, I feel like that was my strong suit. Like, again, I'm a creative and, I came up with these names. It was like, I already knew what it was going to be called. I knew the vibe. And with the agency, it was so unlike anything I've ever done. So I didn't know exactly what I wanted to name it, but I knew I didn't want it to be like something boring, like a typical like marketing agency, like, because that's our, our stick. Like we're not like, and no offense to anyone, like no offense out there, but like, we're not a bunch of dudes, like with marketing degrees, <laughs> like just running you through the pipeline. Like it's like, it's me and my girls and we're all creative and we do something different for every client. And so I'm like, okay, hey, we've got to stand out and it's got to have some sort of like, I need to be able to play on the words a lot. And one day I was driving home from the coffee shop because I knew I'm like, it's going to hit me. This name's going to hit me. I don't want to force it. And I was driving home and I'm like, sauce, like, interesting yes I like the words kind of like weird but like I it's that's it it was it was it just kind of fell into my lap it was really weird and it worked and it is it it is a differentiator it's unique just like your business and your agency and I just I love that and I just I had to ask because last time I forgot it's like why sauce and but it's such a cool name so okay you got to give us some piping hot tea right now please tell us how much can people really make on social media? Because I always feel like, are they going to really tell you their numbers, right? I mean, a lot of times I feel like, is it exaggerated? So give us the piping hot tea, Sam, tell us, tell us the real numbers. Let's do it. So when you say it's probably exaggerated, honestly, it's probably not. Um, There is lots of money to be made in, especially influencer marketing. If you are building a personal brand and you're doing advertising, I mean, this social media is where marketing's headed. Like if people are resisting still at this point, like you can't keep sleeping on this. You're behind the ball at this point if you're resisting it, right? Absolutely, you've got to get involved. So if you're a business and you're looking to market in different ways, influencer marketing is not going anywhere. I think there was a second there where people thought it was going to die out because it got a little stale for sure. Like we kept seeing the same thing over and over again, but I really feel like it's picked up steam again and it's going to keep doing this. This is the best way to reach audiences. And so depending on the size of your audience is how much you can make. So, and so give still- us an example, like what if you've got 10,000 followers, right. For like a round number, what, how much can people really make from that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to put like a direct price tag on there because also, you know, your engagement's involved there too. So I'll give you kind of two scenarios. Um, for example, for me on my personal, I'm running so many accounts. My personal is not as popping as it used to be. Right. But I am at that 11,000 mark. Um, I'm still active on there, but I'm not really doing deals. So if someone were to approach me to do a deal, I would either charge half of what I used to, or I would do it for trade because my engagement isn't what it used to be, if that makes sense. I mean, I can get it there if I really put it, put in the effort, but for me, that's not where I'm at. But if you sit, if you, you know, go on this other side and say, Courtney, you've been building your following and you're growing like crazy and you're at that 10K and people are obsessed with you. They can't get enough. Like you're the next up and comer. You could be charging upwards to, I would say 650 to a thousand per post, depending on the type of post. And it all really comes down to, like you said, it's not necessarily the followers because that number can be manipulated. As we see, there's a lot of people Mm -hmm. that can have bots or they can buy followers. And 
you know, I, I'll definitely get your take on that as well. Cause I know a lot yeah. of people are like, should I just buy my followers and, so no. I can, you know, get to that <laughs> benchmark? Uh, and it's like, you can ruin your page. But so it really comes down to that engagement number, which you can get through insights and analytics specifically. I we're really referring to Instagram right now yeah. uh, is, is the engagement of your post. So people that comment, people that like it also views. So, okay, let's talk Instagram because I think it's mm-hmm. the most prevalent platform right now where people are trying to monetize right and we've we've also got tiktok we've got uh, snapchat spotlight which is like a new one that i think is really up oh and i haven't heard of that one yeah i had a friend get this guys who they uploaded to snapchat spotlight they just re they reused a, a reel that they had posted on Instagram and TikTok and they, and it started trending on spotlight and she got paid out over $8,000 for her what? spotlight. Yes. So you can, you can just, instead of posting a normal snap to your story, you can post it to spotlight. And if it starts trending, then they immediately pay you out and Snapchat pays out a million dollars a day to the top creators. And it's a new thing that they just started doing right with competing with TikTok because I think that's obviously the the big one. I I know I'm addicted. Uh, so, So the engagement numbers are huge. Okay. So talk to us about Instagram because I know a lot of people want to build their brand on there, but it almost seems like the algorithm is rigged, right? It's like, how do I even get people, people that are like my best friends aren't even seeing my posts. So yeah. do you have any, any tips that you'd be willing to share with listeners on how to really get their content out there? Absolutely. Um, so I think a lot of us are facing this um, kind of plateau or almost decline. Um, people are even losing followers, but then you also see someone who is just blowing up out of nowhere. Um, and so what we're starting to notice is those that are gaining traction and getting that engagement are they're posting reels consistently. So, I mean, right now, Instagram's biggest competitor is TikTok. And so anytime they come out with honestly, any new feature, if you're able to adapt to it quickly, that you're going to get rewarded. And so at the moment it's reels. So if you're not doing reels, don't sleep on it. Like it is time to get behind it. Um, and with reels too, it's important that you're not just making a TikTok and reposting it to reels. I mean, you can kind of do that in a way and we'll talk about that, but what is being flagged right now and being pushed down the pipeline is, um, anything that's watermarked with another platform's interesting logo. so the tiktok logo so i'm doing it all wrong sam thanks for letting me know now you I've know i've just been reposting my tiktoks but now i gotta you know do it different so oh and no, I we're digress. all right there too it's <laughs> and it sucks because i mean extra work but you can be strategic about it too so there's a couple of ways to kind of hack it is um you can screen record so before you post to tiktok you've got it all edited you can screen record that and then use the screen recording to put it on reels. Um, I just, I also have noticed too, when you use the, the fonts that they have on TikTok onto Instagram. So when you do that screen recording, sometimes those don't do as well either. So it might be worth it to do just reutilize the same video content or whatever you're creating on TikTok and reuse it in reels and make it in reels. And that's going to help you that much more. Such a good tip, guys. So if you're trying to build your personal brand or your business on multiple platforms, including TikTok and Instagram, don't reuse the content. I just let my eyes are opened. My, my mind is blown. So thank you, Sam, because yes. I'm like, I just, I, I was doing it all wrong, but that's the thing. There's so much gray area. And I think mm-hmm. misinformation, I mean, depending on who you talk to, it's like, Oh, do a, B and C, but then the next person mm-hmm. says, no, you definitely don't. So I'm so glad that we've got an actual social media agency owner on the show because we are getting it directly from the horse's mouth. So, okay. What if you don't have a business? I keep mentioning a personal brand because there's a lot of people listening that they want to be financially free and build passive streams of income, but they're not necessarily interested in starting a full on business. How can they build a personal brand on social media and monetize it? 
Yeah. Great question. So, I mean, right now there's a lot of people trying to do that, which I'm all about. There's room for everyone. Like it's not too late. You can jump in anytime. The biggest thing is finding your niche and like, what is your message? So when I'm creating, what I do for all of our clients is we'll create a content strategy where we go over their overall objective and their content pillars or content categories. So the biggest piece of that is the objective, which a lot of people miss out on. It's basically your mission statement. So why do you have this social media account and what type of message do you want to send? So, um, I mean, whether you're talking about, uh, social issues or maybe your, uh, body positivity or, um, whatever it is that you want to talk about, make sure that's the common theme of your content. Because if you're totally all over the place, it's hard for people to, um, kind of follow, like be a cult following to you because they're not sure what you stand for. They're not sure what they're going to get. And in this world where, you know, we're so stingy with our follows now, like back in the day, like when, you know, Instagram was first starting or even Facebook, like you'd like all of your, or like you were a fan or favorited all of your favorite oh, yeah. businesses. Yeah. Yes. And, um, Instagram, you're following every business. And now we're like, no, like we are honing down and we're only going to follow the people or the businesses that are really exciting us. And so you want to make sure you make the cut, <laughs> right? So, yes. So you want to niche down and you also need to be consistent. This is the number one thing that I see people messing up on is they're wanting to build this personal brand, but they're posting maybe once a week, maybe once a month. Like that's not enough. And I'm not saying you have to post on your feed every single day. I would say really try to implement reels as much as possible. We have a client who we did reels for every single day since um, the beginning of January and their organic following has skyrocketed. It's been wow. crazy. So if you're going to be posting every day, I would focus that on reels. And then also like stories, like stories are still really hot right now. And they're so easy. They're only there for 24 hours. So if you are, you know, just a, a lifestyle, you know, influencer or personal brand, like you can take snapshots of your day. Like what's going on? Are you going to a meeting? Are you going to a beautiful brunch with a friend? Like get those quick snaps and you're going to start boosting already just from those little things, um, on the algorithm. So, I think those are my biggest tips are really niche down, really understand what your message is and then stay consistent. And I guess I want to add one more thing is interact with your audience, like help them feel like a community. Um, I feel like a lot of time and I've done this before too. So I'm right here with all of you guys. If you feel like I'm calling you out, <laughs> but if you feel attacked, just you realize feel attacked, Sam's attacking herself yes, as well. So. I'm calling myself <laughs> out too. So what a lot of people do is we forget who the hero in the story is. So we're creating this like story for them to read. Right. And we think the hero is us. We think we're the star. That is not true at all. We are their guide, the audience, they are the star. So we need to help them be successful or give them the tips for them to be better or to grow. And we're just the guide. No one wants to have someone else be the main character of the story. They want to be like, we're all inherently selfish. It just is what it is. So take a step back, go into the back seat, like see, and guide them, tell them where they need to go and help them be the winner in the end of the day. I love that because a lot of times we do post because again, we are inherently thinking about ourselves because that mm -hmm. is human nature, but we post for our entertainment. So it's something that I enjoy or something that I did, but if you're wanting to build a brand and build passive income, and it's not passive at first, of course, and a lot of times it could be not passive at all because you're constantly getting brand deals. But if you're wanting to build another stream of income, it really has to come down to the star of the show is your follower. How are they benefiting from the content that you're putting out? And if you can't identify a benefit on the other end of the screen, then the content is probably not going to perform well, right? Whether it's exactly. you're giving them humor, you're giving them tips, you're giving them tricks, you are giving them uh, guidance on whatever the niche 
niches that you've really narrowed down to. So I think that's a great perspective and something that we really do forget about. It's like, I'm posting something I like, and this is really about me, right? Uh That's not true. So I think that's an amazing tip or trick for people building businesses and brands. So, uh, okay. Any other additional tips or tricks on top trending platforms? We touched a little bit on TikTok. How is that going for building brands and business awareness? What what are your thoughts on it? TikTok is where it is at. Again, I keep saying this, don't sleep on it. I know there's a lot of things like social media can feel really overwhelming, but if you're strategic with how you plan your posts, it doesn't have to feel that, you know, overwhelming, but TikTok is so easy right now to start trending on. Like you can go viral so quickly, especially product-based businesses. They are blowing up. If you have an online store, you need to be on TikTok. It is so much easier to grow on there versus Instagram. And honestly, people, if they find you on TikTok, they might go follow you on Instagram too. It's kind of this like, like the circle of growth. It's so exciting. And it's like where Instagram was like seven years ago where everybody's like, yeah, follow, follow, follow. It's that's how I see TikTok right now in the beginning stages, right? Yes. 100%, 100%. So, um, you want to be one of those early brands. And like, I think back on the brands that hopped on the Instagram train really early and there's still some of the top accounts. Um, so make sure like at least dive in. If you're not familiar with TikTok, I know it can be overwhelming, like, and getting used to it is just like, okay, another platform really, but just like to get started, go play around on it, go see what it's about, see what people are already creating, um, and get involved. So you can kind of like, you, you get a taste for it before you just jump in and you're like, okay, so I'm trying to stitch these videos. I don't really know what I'm doing. You, you want to see what the platform's about before you dive head first. Um, and then just try stuff. It, it's so nice too. I, and I think this is a common trend among all social media platforms, but everyone's wanting that real raw in the moment feel instead of these beautiful, like photo shoots, like you know, big productions. Yes. Yes. And that's like, that's how it used to be with social media. And it was, that was a headache, but it was really hard to manage. Now you can literally film everything on your phone. You can have it in your workspace. Like it's so easy now. And just, I just encourage you all to play around with it. And also there's really cool things. You can follow certain hashtags. They call them like small business, TikTok or personal finance, TikTok or indie TikTok, like whatever you're into there is a whole community of people on TikTok that are into it as well. Like we have a company that is a CBD company that we work with. There's a whole CBD community on TikTok. And so um, follow those hashtags, get involved with those com- communities and engage with those accounts. And that'll help you grow as well. But I think first things first, get your feet wet and then just try things out. Well, I think you touched on a really important topic within social media is authenticity is something that we highly seek after. And if you feel like something is too curated or fraudulent, uh, as far as, is this person trying to, what's their agenda? Are they trying to push something onto me? We are really turned off by that because I think a lot of people are monetizing their social media. And so if it doesn't feel authentic, if it feels too perfect, a lot of times people don't want that. So that can be something that holds people back is, well, I don't have the perfect aesthetic in the background. Mm -hmm. Every single picture on my feed doesn't match. No one's going to follow me. And that's not the case anymore. Maybe, you know, a couple years ago. Yeah. You you know, you need to make sure that you had all monotone, monochromatic feed pictures. Not now people want authenticity is something that I know I seek after, you know, if I, if I feel that it's too much of an ad, I'm like, eh, unfollow. And I know a lot of people feel that way. Oh yeah. 100%. And that, that kind of goes into what I was saying earlier about like influencer marketing felt stale for a moment there. And that's why, because it was, we were almost in between these new ways of marketing and new platform trends. And we were just seeing ad after ad after ad. And what we want is that real like authenticity, like you're saying. And that's why I like reels too, because they can kind of be thrown together and it yes. works and we love it. So yeah. Well, and I have to concur. TikTok is my new addiction. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I was just the creeper on TikTok that would just scroll and laugh. And then I started making videos 
And it's true. Anybody can go viral. I made, it was like the second video I made and it got 3 million views within the first day. And uh, that would never happen on Instagram. Right. And so the reason why I mentioned that is not to be like, Hey, everybody look at me, but it's because I, I was like, what? I I woke up and I I was like, that's not real, but it's because the algorithm isn't quote unquote fixed, right? It's like anybody can go viral and start monetizing without curating a perfect feed for, you know, a year. So if you are held up on that, just push that back, push that aside because people want authenticity and you can really start going viral from the get-go. So uh, I just, I love that. Okay. Where can the listeners find you if they have more questions or maybe they're looking for an agency to help them build their brand or their business online? Yeah. So we're all over Instagram and TikTok. So you can follow us on, um, sauce creative agency on both platforms. And then, uh, like you said earlier, you were on my podcast, the sauce boss podcast, so much fun. Um, so you can go listen for more social media tips there. We're always talking about small business, social media and manifesting. Um, and then if they are interested in, inquiring for business um you can email hello at saucecreativeagency.com and we can get you going there and then our website is saucecreativeagency.com i love it and you had mentioned before that you have something launching something a, yes. a product coming out what what's going on tell us yes it's going to be our first ever digital product we're super excited me and my assistant have been working on this for a few months now Um, but it will basically be your guide to creating a content strategy that's bulletproof. So it's going to help you balance out your messaging, identify your objective and, um, help you come up with content ideas. So you're never sitting on, you know, the question of what do I need to post? You always have something to post. that's going to be high quality. Um, and it's going to align with your brand. So essentially our product is a digital product. That's going to help you do all of those things. And it's such an affordable price. Like it's just a no brainer. It's a no brainer guys, because if you, if this is something that you really do want to do, you want to build income through social media, having a content a uh, guideline to follow is one of the biggest hurdles to, to get over because every day you kind of feel stumped. What, what am I going to post? What am I going to do to engage? And that can be overwhelming. So to be able to have a digital product to help take that off the table for you. So you can just focus on creating and building your community. That is definitely worth it. And I think you said it's coming out April 9th, April 9th. Yep. Fantastic. And guys, I will link, Sam actually created a special promotion just for you guys as listeners of the podcast to be able to get a discount off of this digital product. And so I'll make sure to link it in the show notes as well as in the show description. So you can just directly click on that to go find the digital product. So you can really get to creating your content, building your brand, building your business and creating income through social media. And so Sam, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to come on to the show today. And we really enjoy, we might have to do this again. Always down. I always love talking to you. This was so much fun. Thanks for having me. It was so much fun. Guys, if you can see the recording, you can see that we are vibing right now. Yes. Uh, But if you're listening, you can can probably (laughs) tell through our voices. Okay. Well, uh, like always, guys, if you're not following us on uh, Instagram, it's at Financially Free Journey. And I post daily tips and motivation to help you on your journey. Until next time.